Hey everybody, I'm Austin Ward. Welcome in to Letterman Live. It's a Tuesday. Ohio State has won another football game and we're bringing you our largest panel yet. You know when it's Tulane week that we got to get it going. So we've got Evan Spencer, we've got Jake Stoneburner, Boom Heron for the first time there in the middle, Beanie Wells, Jeremy Birmingham, and Reed Fragle. So we've got a full house. We've got a lot to discuss. We'll take as many of your questions as you want to throw at them. Otherwise, we're going to let these guys mainly just talk about football uh, the way they want to and what they saw on Saturday night that impressed them. Just to start it off, guys, I think, I don't know. If Nick Bosa is out for some period of time, who's got some concerns with the Ohio State defense? I certainly don't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you watch the guys, uh, you know, Chase Young, Cooper, Draymond Jones was a beast. All those guys come up and pick up uh, the slack from, uh, you know, Bosa not being there. I mean, I think you have to take your hat off to Larry Johnson in the way that he prepares his guys on a week-to-week -week basis. At any given point in time, I mean, you got somebody that can step in and keep mm -hmm. up that same production. Nobody's yeah. concerned? Not at all? Absolutely not. I mean, you look at Draymond Jones, you're looking at Robert Landers, you know, the game that he had before uh, TCU, and then obviously you're looking at guys like Chase Young, you know. It's kind of cool to be in a position to where we can say, you know, hey, take your time, get healthy. You know, we, we got some guys that can go to battle for you, and, 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 and when you come back healthy, it's going to be able to allow us to just play. Yeah. Listen, losing the best defensive player in America is not – going to be something you just replace but i do think that there's an opportunity for ohio state to maybe move draymond jones outside in some instances and and use davon hamilton and robert landers and tommy togi and teron vincent on the inside to kind of help offset that loss i think jonathan cooper played his best game as a buckeye on saturday chase young i think still they're waiting for him to kind of emerge on his own without having the help from both on the other side but they're not going to miss him this weekend but i think obviously this is a totally different conversation when you're heading into Penn State next week. We're pretty outnumbered, though, Burnham. I mean, it's two journalists and five former Buckeyes. Yeah, I mean, I, mean <laughs> I just I think Bosa, I mean, you're talking about the best defensive player in America. So even as good as those other guys are, it's going to feel like a drop-off, right? Right? Yeah. yeah, at least this first week, like you said, Tulane, they'll be A-OK -okay without him. It's when you the Big Ten opponents start coming in, the real defense, I mean, offensive, and you're like, all right, not having the best player in the country is going to hurt us a little yeah. bit just because he's one of the best players in the country. Like you said, Chase Young and Cooper, they might be the best players at their point in time down the road, but right now they're not. And so losing someone like that is going to hurt a little bit. Especially, too, next week. I mean, it, we don't know yet exactly how long this injury is going to last for him, but next week is Penn State on the road. That's You want to have – you want to have your guys ready to go because that that could decide the Big Ten East. Have they but said how long it's gonna we don't right now. There's still you know, Urban Meyer said I asked him about an hour ago on the teleconference. He's still getting tested. Uh, you know sometimes we're not going to get this you know full truth at this point. It's only been a couple of days, but uh, they're supposed to try and get a better feel for this abdominal or groin injury uh, by the middle of the week. I don't know if any of you guys have dealt with that in your career. But it, you know. <laughs> I, I've, read, I've read rumors that it, he's out for the year. I've read rumors that he's out for six weeks. And I've read rumors that he'll be back for Penn State. So, I mean, at this point, anybody that's saying they know anything is full of it. But I, I think that for Ohio State, after Penn State, you kind of have a, a nice month of October if it's something that requires a significant period of rest. But you still got to get through Penn State. It seems like a good reminder to avoid the rumors and just come to Letterman Row or we report the facts that we right. know. <laughs> I mean, it's fun to speculate, right? I mean, it's Nick Bosa, and I keep talking about him as being a dark horse Heisman contender. Everyone wants to know, so I get that why there's speculation, but if Urban Meyer says they don't know until the middle of the week, maybe he has a better idea than he lets on publicly. I'm sure that that's the case, but... Um, and nobody wants all of their information out to the to their opponents coming up. I'm sure they would rather have Penn State prepare for Nick Bosa to play. But we don't know at this point what it's going to be. We just know that he's out on Saturday. And as you guys said, it's probably not going to be an issue. Yeah, moving on. <laughs> Is Tate Martell going to play? <laughs> oh, here we go. Uh, no, he didn't need to play last week. They, they stuck with the guys. Uh, I thought that was – we're not going to talk about Tate Martell this week, okay? Let's talk about – Sorry, the everyone. Back. Sorry, everyone. You're Jesus not getting what you wanted. So you know yeah, what you're going to get with him. <laughs> yeah. But well, how about the guy who is – the Heisman Trophy candidate at quarterback um, goes sees a lot of pressure from TCU, throws for 344 yards, accounts for three touchdowns. Uh, guys, three weeks of the Wayne Haskins era. What do we think here? First and foremost, I, I believe he has the best arm talent in the country. Uh, when you look at you know Tua Dowd at uh, yeah at, at Alabama, I mean I think those two are the top two quarterbacks in the country. When you watch Dwayne Haskins, he's so accurate, he's so efficient. He pitched the ball in amazing places that you don't expect for a guy that's just coming into the game mm -hmm. as a starting quarterback. I mean, I think that you, you hear it all the time, but the sky's the limit with this guy. And I'm of the belief that we're probably 
not going to have the great fortune of having him on <laughs> for three years. It's probably going to be a one and done. Might be one, yeah. I mean, there's a when, when you look at quarterback plays, there's 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 a couple different dynamics, right? You can look at somebody who's throwing to open receivers, and you can look at people who have the charisma and the confidence to throw receivers open, right? There's a very very big difference there, and he has that confidence, that charisma to do it because he knows that naturally. He knows he can get it there. He knows he can get it there in a hurry, and he can put it on any corner of the receiver he has to for him to make a play and when you have a, a group of receivers like we do that can make plays all mm -hmm. over the field, it just allows him to play free and have fun. And, and I think to that point, that's why we will only see him for a year. <laughs> and and I, I do hope I do hope that he does see, um, you know, win the uh, Heisman Trophy because uh, you, you know that he's out there having fun and, and it looks like uh, a group of guys like to, you know, see what he's doing out there as well, you know. Yeah. Reed, as an offensive lineman, how easy is it for you guys to know that you have a quarterback that's going to get the ball out of his hands that quick and, and put it where it needs to be as opposed to maybe a quarterback that has a little less confidence and a little less bravado back there. Yeah, it's kind of um, – it's, it's definitely something that as a lineman you, you don't have to worry about. You have a little bit more time, you know. Um, he's going to hit the window when it's open. You don't have to sit back there, though, for five seconds and hope he finds something. And not, if not, he's going to scramble out there. Um, but I think you're seeing um, his pocket presence right now is at an all-time high as far as confidence level goes, and he's being deliberate with his passes. Um, but you know, moving forward, I think he's just going to make us miss. I hate saying this, but he's making us miss JT less and less with each game. So, as a lineman, though, he makes their job a lot easier. For them. Are there any less oh shit blocks? <laughs> <laughs> Given he gets the ball out so quick, it's kind of hard to believe, right, Reed? That you know, you you lose a guy who produced more touchdowns than anybody in Big Ten history, and sudden, and it's like the offense is at a completely higher gear somehow. Yeah, I think that was a, a huge concern. I wouldn't say huge, but it was a big concern, I think, exiting last season. Um, you know, we saw glimpses of it against the Michigan, Michigan game uh, from Haskins. But, you know, every game, every snap, every every drive he's gone on from the beginning of the season, when it went 8-8, eight and eight, 100 and some yards, whatever that was, yeah. um, he's just proven all those doubters wrong. I feel like I'm doing running the Heisman campaign for, like, multiple guys because <laughs> – J.K. Dobbins had the biggest uh, improvement in, in the betting odds to win the Heisman after last week. So, boom, um, it's your first time in here. Beanie's had to address this like 100 times. With J.K. and Mike Weber, how, you know, what do you see in these guys? What do you like about, like or don't like as a running back about maybe the way they've rotated uh, series? And, you know, I know that Beanie doesn't like it, but, you know, maybe you've seen something that you like in those two. Honestly, I actually like it. Yeah. I, mean, I, I think they do they both. Uh, work off each other, you know, um, once one guy gets hot, I think you should let him roll, you know, that's probably what Beanie uh, yeah. is saying. <laughs> he said he wants 35 carries, so. Honestly, I, honestly, I, I didn't like it when, you know, he got all the carries, I, I was there, <laughs> you know, but um, I think those guys got something good going, um, I just love the way that they run the ball, and uh, they're doing great, man. When you watch J.K. run, what's the first thing that you notice about him that, that makes him so good? What I like about him, he's physical and he has a little shiftiness to him, you know, and he uh, he sets up his blocks. Uh, he does a great job of doing that, so uh, he's just real smooth when he runs. Bean, has your mind changed at all about the way they're running this show? No, I mean, I, I like, <laughs> I, obviously, you know how I am. If it was me back there, it's not me back there, so I, I can speak <laughs> I, I, I in a little bit different terms. Uh, you know, but I mean, I like how they ride the hot hand. Yeah. Who's ever uh, the back right. that's going to give them the best opportunity, that's who they're going with. And last week it was J.K. I mean, J.K. took off, and I mean, like Boom said, when you watch him set up his blocks, I mean, I think that's one of the more underrated things that he does. Uh, he makes it so much easier on everybody because he runs to the heels of the line of scrimmage, runs to the heels of the blocker, then makes his jump cutter, makes his shift, making it that much easier uh, for the offensive lineman. I mean, I think the kid is a beast. Um, yeah. Obviously, we know he has that, that Heisman ability, but will he be able to do it? I mean, that's a big question mark considering <laughs> who we have with the quarterback here. When you look at this now, I, I think if there's one question about this team after three games, it's been the big plays allowed on defense. Zach Bourne was in here this morning, so now it's one, two, three, four, five offensive players and zero <laughs> defensive players. Um, but I don't know, when you guys watch on Saturday some of the maybe breakdowns with the linebackers, maybe bad angles in the secondary, are these correctable issues for you guys? Or are you actually concerned? Where do you stand You know, three weeks into this with the longest play allowed in school history coming off that game on Saturday? Okay, I think a lot of, like you said, bad angles, maybe a few mistakes here and there. A couple guys went to make plays. I was like, who is that? You know, <laughs> so obviously, they're young guys, and so they're going to be out in this big stage making mistakes. I think that's all correctable stuff. 
they've got the athletes, the coaches to get everything together. Um, being on that type of stage as a younger player, some mm -hmm. things are just going to look bigger. Yeah. Uh, especially probably if you weren't even expecting to play, and all of a sudden you've got guys out there that are like, oh, gosh, I'm in you know, prime time. I've got to make this play. And all of a sudden you read one thing and then 95-yard touchdown. Um, I think that's all correctable. There was at not one point did I feel like they were more athletic than us, better than us, more talented than us. It was just you know details, and I think that's always can get ironed out, especially when you got the headman back this week. Yeah, I mean, and and, and I'd, I'd further that point, just you know, that experience in that type of stage, uh, it's something that you know nobody. I mean, everybody can you know some people can get in and and, and thrive in that in yeah. instance, but. You know, there is going to be that bit of learning curve, right? There's, there's going to be okay. Now I got to figure out a way to compete on third down, and I know I got four million people watching me because it's the you know, Saturday night game, and or you know I'm running an inside nine or whatever. So, <clears throat> given that fact, um, you know, and given there are some youth, there there is some younger players mm -hmm. on our defense. You know, you just kind of got to roll with them, let them get that experience, let them kind of you know get a couple scars, learn from them, get it on film, get with coach more importantly this week, and figure out ways to 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 you know, thrive in those adverse situations and then just kind of take it from there. Well, you're talking seven new starters on defense coming into this season and not even just that, starting the season without Borland in the middle, without Jordan Fuller in the first game, uh, starting now to see Sean Wade get moved into that uh, safety spot opposite Fuller, I think we'll see that more and more. Maybe if I'm Ohio State's defensive coaches, I stop rotating the second corner situation and move one of those three to the nickel and put Sean back full time at safety. But mm -hmm. I mean, I think that they're still trying to figure out the pieces that they have, and certainly it's not an ideal for Ohio State to give up a 93-yard touchdown run and then a 51-yard pass that was honestly one of the worst defended plays I've ever seen in my entire life of watching Ohio State football. I, I, I don't know what the safety was looking at. I, I have a picture where he's looking entirely the wrong way um, when the ball's already behind him. Yeah. I was a baseball player most of my life, and I know that <laughs> if, if I ever saw somebody track a fly ball like that, they wouldn't have played again. Well, but. that play did make it on Buck IQ tomorrow, so if they want Zach Boren's takes on that, please tune in to the newest edition uh, tomorrow morning. So just yeah. to plug that. There, there's, there's room for improvement, and, uh, and we said it after week one. I think that's a good thing at this point in the season. If, if we're still having this conversation at the end of October, it, you know, maybe a little bit different. But You guys have brought up something that's interesting to me, and that's – you all had to go out and play for the first time, but your home games are at the Horseshoe. You play for 100,000 people. Is it different when – are you talking about the first time you play against a top 15 team, the first time you go to an NFL stadium? Are those – are all those things uncomfortable? Or the night game. A night game? Yeah, the, the noon, 3.30 issue, you get used to that. It's the night game. Mm -hmm. When you're the only one on TV, the lights are out. That's, mm -hmm. that's the first environment where you're like, okay, this is, this is why I came to Ohio State. This is what we're doing here. Um, the, those are the games you play for. Obviously, the noon Michigan game, the ranked 330 games, those are always exciting. But it's that night game. It's the crowd's different. It's just a different atmosphere. And uh, you've got to kind of strap up with, you know, physically <laughs> yeah. and mentally because you're like, you know, we're playing against a great team. But also, I got to make sure I got my P's and, you know, everything checked because I got, we're on a national stage. I can't be screwing up. Yeah. Here. Boom, you're nodding your head. What was the first time like? First time? Yeah. <laughs> 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 you know what? To piggyback on that uh, USC home game, uh, first year that was that was crazy. You know, obviously they had a great defense. You know, the, the year before we lost to them, um, but them coming to our house, man, it was insane. You know, they had top defense. You had Taylor Mays, he's this big safety everybody's <laughs> talking about. In my mind, I'm like, oh, I gotta get him. And obviously, <laughs> if you guys remember the uh, the play, we had a big collision in that game. <laughs> And everybody talks about it all the time, and I think that was probably one of the biggest games, you know, of my career because it, it was just like a crazy game, crazy game, you know, and very exciting, very electric, you know, like 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 you say that the crowd is always going to be crazy, one hundred ten thousand going crazy. Yeah, it's just one of those uh, electric games. Does that ever become normal? I mean, it's it's crazy. Like I can't even imagine doing it once. I wouldn't say. Let me see real quick. I, I wouldn't say it gets normal, but you you understand how to compete in that environment better. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Boom went in there and he knew that he was going to make a collision. He was going to make a noise and, and make a splash. But you know, I'm sure there were a couple of plays in there where he said, "Man, I, 
you know, I, I, I could have done that, and that's what I was thinking. But, right. you know, I, I just had to see it a couple of times. But now I'm ready, you know, next game. And, you know, now we're playing Penn State or we're playing Wisconsin or we're playing whoever, and now I'm ready for it, right? So, so th those are those learning curve moments that I'm talking about. I don't know about these guys, but big games for me was always normal. Yeah, as long as he was always the hot hand. As long as he had 35 carries in a big game, exactly. he's ready to go. He was always the hot hand. That's why, that's why you never got to play, boom. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is the guy we needed to come in to talk about J.K. and Mike right here. I mean, no, you know, I think for me, uh, is it different, obviously, aside from just playing on the road for the first time, playing at night, how do you prepare differently for that 8.30 game when every other game this year, the other first two games were sort of scrimmages? It's kind of, uh, those, I don't know about you guys, but for me, those night games, the days are a lot longer. Oh, you have all the time long, in the world man. to think super about long. Everything and anything that could go wrong. Or <laughs> could go right. I mean, obviously, you like to fantasize about good plays, but you know those bad thoughts do creep in your head uh, during those long days. But you typically have about, I think it was like three or four hours where you're down in the room, just maybe flip a movie on or something, try to take your mind off, decompress a little bit. But um, I would, I wouldn't say that those ever become normalized. Those night games, those atmospheres, but uh, they definitely uh, bring out the best of most guys. You guys mentioned, that, Jake, I think you mentioned this, that you know the head man is back. We've spent a lot of time. We're not going to discuss too much about what Urban said during the press conference or bring up a former wide receivers coach. But having Urban back now and the way that Ohio State managed training camp, that they got through the first three games, what does that, does that tell you guys anything? Does that change You know, maybe if you had any concerns about winning a national championship, the way they got through it? Did, what did that mean to you? What, did you? what do you read into that? Feel bad for Tulane, honestly. <laughs> I really do. I know how Urban's going to come in, and they're they're going to be fired up, ready to go, probably the rest of the season, just because they were kind of, you know, shunned a little bit, you know, with the, with the bad press, full steam ahead, and them going three and zero, and the way they looked without their head coach, and now you bring in the best, one of the best coaches in the country, mm -hmm. man. You know what I really yeah. wonder in that situation is if Urban learned anything, stepping aside and mm -hmm. saying, you know what, this team was just fine. Mm -hmm. Without yeah. me, maybe there were a couple of kinks and things that you know I could have made a little bit better. But maybe I take a little bit more of a backseat and put some more of the onus on the coaches, and I don't come in and kind of mess up anything, any cohesiveness that they, yeah. they were able to gain while I was missing. It's interesting that you said that, Beanie, because on that teleconference an hour ago, because yesterday we had to keep the focus on what happened, the investigation, let him tell his side. We did that. It wasn't a football press conference. Today we start back in with the football questions, and the top one is you know one of them. What are you going to do calling the plays? Is Ryan Day going to be on the field, continue to lead that? And yes, Ryan Day is going to stay on the field. He's not going to be in the press box. We asked Urban, are you going to step back a little bit? And he said, yes, I'm going to be the game manager. Because why would you mess with what they were doing in the first three games? Mm -hmm. To your point, uh, you know, he had to have learned something. And if that was, maybe I shouldn't run the quarterback 16 times a game, <laughs> you know, so be it. There's a little bit of football silver lining there. We're not going to talk any about, about any of the rest of that stuff, but, you know, I, I think you, you you don't really have that opportunity as a head coach yeah. right. to watch your own team for three weeks right. and then maybe self-evaluate in that respect. Yeah, I mean, at, at the outlook, you know, we're, we're looking at the overall outcome of the, the season. We're trying to project what it looks like, right? And, and obviously the hand that we got dealt wasn't the best. And, and what we do here at Ohio State so well is we put ourselves in, like, these mini situations or these mini challenges almost, right? Mm -hmm. so, hey, we got three weeks. What are we going to do to get better each three weeks? They'll coach us back, and once we get that, you know, get everybody riled up and, and ready to go for, you know, what we got and <clears throat> keeping them focused on one game at a time, one practice at a time, one play at a time. But now that we've seen what we've seen in the last three weeks and without the head coach being there and now that Coach Meyer's back, like, you know, Jake said, watch out Tulane, watch, <laughs> watch out Penn State, where it's after that, you know, and onward. So I think, you know, for me, watching how the team responded these three weeks was huge to, you know, to, for me to be able to say, you know, feeling really comfortable for how we're going to compete at the end of the season. When you look at this, guys, and I want you to be honest because I know that, you know, interviewing everybody, going through this over the years. Yeah, Beanie's out of here. Hey, real quick, we're having some, like, mic problems. Let's just uh, use only the long one that Burns got. So we just pull the two ones out of the box. And this just one? go up Burns and just pass it around. This one, too? Uh, yeah. Well, let, let me see if I can figure out which one that is. Use your donkeys. We're going to pull that and just pass around the big one. Sorry, guys. It's the first time with seven people, so there's bound to be some technical okay. issues. All right, so I'm pulling all of them out? Yeah. Okay, there's only one in. That's that one. Well, I read, take the shot. I have the power.
Hey, hey. So this is what happens when you do live shows because you just never know what happens. Um, Austin, how are you? Good, good. You look great. Nick got a haircut. He looks super. Yeah, it's unfortunate you out there at home don't get to see how good Nick's hair looks. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It's real nice. Oh, Austin. Whoop. Well, this is going to get real tough now. Um, one week at a time. You guys know that Penn State is coming, and you know that Tulane, if you're getting ready for this, you know that you're not going to struggle to win on Saturday, right? I mean, do you really mean that when you say that this game is the most important and that you're not looking at Penn State at all? I mean, you gotta you got to be honest with me now. You're not playing this one. It's got to be hard. I mean, that's that's a, a conversation that's, you know, as old as football, to be quite honest with you. But, uh, you know, I just say, given the operating circumstance, Coach Meyer just got back, yeah. and he's itching to get with those guys. You know, obviously throughout the week, like he's he's done the last couple of weeks, but more importantly on that Saturday, I don't know if readiness or looking past an opponent or anything like that will be something we'll have to worry about. Well, a lot of the times when you play an inferior team, I mean, let's be honest, they just are. The coaches aren't going to beat around the bush and say, "Hey, this, we got to really." Tr I mean, they're going to tell you, "Listen, we should beat them. We play the way we play. Game over." But they're going to prep that you got to play that way, and we're going to do everything we can to play better than we're supposed to. I remember at OSU, there's a lot of times we played down to our opponent. We would play, oh, just I don't know, OU, Miami, Purdue, whoever. <laughs> Literally, and it, and we would play down to the opponent, knowing that they definitely weren't as good as us, we should beat them, and more, more times than not, we would. But it was just that mindset of, all right, all right, it's Tulane, it's Purdue, it's whoever, and you're like, all right, we're all focused on that next week. And that, as much as you don't want to think, oh, okay, we're so much better, we can just go out and play, a lot of times we lost because we thought that. At Purdue, too many times we lost because, man, they sucked. We should have whooped their ass. Right. Excuse my language. You're, you're yeah. on the internet. Anyway. Yeah, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> But we we played down to them because we already had thought that. And sometimes, you know, you already know it, but you don't need to hear it. And then we played to our bad side. Um, it's – but like Evan said, it's Coach Meyer's first week back. There is – there's not – there, you're playing for that. That's good enough. They'll they'll come out fired, ready to go. And if not, Coach Meyer will make sure of that. And if you still aren't ready, you probably won't be playing much anymore after that, to be honest. Is there, is there any truth to the idea that those games when maybe you're not as mentally focused that you're setting yourself up potentially for more physical injury? Like if you're not like dialed in and, and amped up that maybe you're more likely to get hurt or, or do something stupid where you aren't really prepared because you didn't Absolutely. go all the way in? Absolutely. If you're yeah. blocking in the wrong guy or let's say pass protection slide right and you slide left and you run into Reed Fragle <laughs> and he steps on your ankle, that's not going to feel great. And that could just be, you know what, I wasn't preparing today because I already knew we were going to beat them, so I'm not going to think too much in it. And all of a sudden you really get hurt because you just did something wrong. You hurt the wrong way. You weren't really super locked in. I mean, those happen all the time, but sometimes, you know, in those lesser games, you're not as focused at noon. You're like, noon, Tulane, okay, I don't need to really focus too much on it. And next thing you know, you – I think I broke my ankle playing Eastern Michigan because I went the wrong way and Brandon Sane stepped on it. And you guys scored like 73 points that game. Yeah, 73. And so obviously, <laughs> but it, I hurt myself doing something wrong. Whether that was just being checked out or not, I don't know. Yeah, I wasn't focused. Thanks, B. <laughs> what about <laughs> what about from the perspective of at least you know putting some things in, like a coaching staff or preparing for Penn State in that respect where you know that you know you still have to be focused that week but maybe they're doing some things that you wouldn't ordinarily do yeah I think this is a, a prime game to one I'm thinking I said this before on, on the show uh, coach Meyer always said he wanted to put up 100 points in a game and I'm hoping this is it's the prime stage for it is return back yeah yeah but <laughs> they would have done that against against Oregon State and imagine that. It, they would have done it the weekend, and he wasn't there. Yep. They could have scored 100 that week. Yeah, he would have been pretty upset, I think, if he, if he was not there for that. No, but uh, on top of that, though, I think it's a, it's a prime time game for um, getting in some packages just for film's sake, getting Tate out there maybe a couple more times. 
Um, just because. I'm excited now. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see Matt Baldwin on Saturday. Okay. Just the more packages you can put out there for a film, this is the perfect game for it. So that's more a matter of uh, making Penn State look at that and think about that. Yeah. No, I mean, it's it, it's a stack game. It's making Penn State prepare for something that they're probably not going to see, but nonetheless, they'll have to prepare for. Um, you know, that, that, that's what it is, you know, focus on what we need to do to get better, you know, and that, that'll be kind of inwards looking at practice. That'll be inwards looking at the game that we that just passed and, yeah. and figuring out how we have to do better to compete as a team. But, uh, you know, past that, eh, you know, you just kind of got to play at a time and then, you know, kind of take it from there. Reed seems to be predicting 100 points this week. It's It's almost pointless for a game like this to ask for a prediction, but – you know, the spread, I think, is 35 this week. Is that right? 35? 37. So, another one. I mean, I'm picking them to cover. I think that the uh, defensive line is going to be just fine this week without Nick Bosa. Maybe not next week. But, you know, what are you guys looking for? You don't have to predict a score. You don't have to predict a winner. I think we know who that's going to be. But what do you want to see this week against Tulane to make sure that Ohio State's ready for Penn State? Uh, starting with me, uh, you know, I'd – beat a dead horse I, I i just want to see progression from the defense you know particularly the uh the, the linebackers and the dbs you know i want to see that experience that we're talking about yeah you're going to have games like that you're going to have games where um you know maybe you've gone the wrong way or you over pursued or you took the wrong angle but you need to be able to learn from those mistakes um and and, and then more importantly compete with your brothers and not do them again when people are counting on you so i think that's what i'm gonna be looking from from those two groups but you know other than that i will Defer to my colleague. I'm going to give this to, to Boom. And we'll swing her back around. Thank you. Not to be selfish, but I always like to see the running backs eat. <laughs> so I would like to see uh, like to see us run the ball well, have the uh, O-line, you know, play well. And obviously, you know, we're going into uh, Big Ten season uh, next week, you know, starting with Penn State. So, you know, our biggest thing, you know, when I was in school is you got to be able to run the ball in Big Ten, you know. So this is a, a good time to get it started, you know, get the guys going, get the line going. And obviously, like he said, i like to see better play out of the DBs, the linebackers. Um, obviously, we know we have a great defensive line and everything starts up front. So um, I think they'll do well um, with Boss out. You know, I feel like it's a great time for some young guys to step up and show what they could do. Um, so just go out, you know. Play one one play at a time. Have fun out there. Win the game, and, you know, and uh, and and keep moving forward. But uh, obviously, you got to go out there and play the game. You know, right. you can't be thinking about Penn State. Right. Obviously, like uh, like Jake said, uh, you don't want to be like us uh, against Purdue, where we overthinking. You know, <laughs> we're better than this team. We got the better athletes. You know, they're gonna come in here and play. Right. You know, any any time a team like that comes in and they have the opportunity to to play on a big stage. You know, these are guys who who didn't have a chance to go to Ohio State or other big schools, so this is their time to shine. Mm -hmm. So we have to play our we have to play our best game. And with Irvin coming back, obviously, you know, he's gonna be excited. The guys gonna are, are gonna be excited. They're gonna put some points up. So this would be the time to shine. Why not why not make this a stat game where you put put some stats up and you know, <laughs> make some plays, get go. on ESPN and you know, <laughs> shine, you know. This right. this is one of those games. Nice. Man, for me, I just love watching the quarterback. I I think he – Troy Smith's my dude. That's like one of the, my favorite Buckeyes of all time. But I think number seven might be the best quarterback I've seen in the Scarlet and Gray as far as potential in the next level and what he's done in the four games I've seen him play. It's pretty spectacular. So I like – I appreciate really good quarterback play, and I think he's one of the best I've seen at that age and that quick. So I'm really excited to watch him play, and I think – just every game, he's going to get better and better. So seeing him go against Tulane, whether, you know, everything else, I'm excited for the Buckeyes, but I just, I like Dwayne and I like the way he's playing. And I think he is a Heisman candidate, top five, top three, whatever, how you want to slice it. I just, you know, each from here game on out, I think he's proven himself that if I can play at this elite Heisman level, they are going to be unreal tough to beat. And I think as long as he keeps continuing like that and doesn't play down to his opponent like we all have done before, uh, I think that could be a stamp to get him ready for Big Ten season. And like Boom said, this is the prep for the whole rest of the season. You play well here, you're going to feel great going into those next few weeks. You come up here, play down to the level of your opponent, you're like, dang, we should have smoked them. And now we're coming into Penn State, a little hesitant. Get this two-lane game out of the way, blow them out, and you'll be you know, all cylinders clicking, ready to go at the Happy Valley. 
since he won't say it, I'll say it. I want to see the tight ends get more involved in the offense. I, I think that, 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 that doesn't well, exist. It's going. It's going to happen eventually. And I, I, you know, Luke Farrell last week at TCU hurt his ankle and uh, was really gimpy most of the game. They tried to go to Rashad Berry a few times. I want to see Jeremy Ruckert involved. I want to see him in the middle of the field. I want to see Dwayne Haskins go over the middle of the field to his outlets a little bit more. I, I know that he's a little comfortable throwing the, the little swings to, to J.K. and Mike out of the backfield, but I want to see the Buckeyes start to utilize the whole field on the offensive side of the ball. And on defense, I just want to see consistency in that second safety spot. Whoever it is, whether it's Isaiah Pryor or Jocelyn Wint or Sean Wade or Brendan White, I don't care. I just want to see somebody back there that is is reliable and consistent so that Jordan Fuller can play half of the field instead of having to play the entire field because I think that he's overextending himself a little bit trying to do too much to help the guy next to him. So that's all I want to see. I'm not worried about the offense scoring points. I'm not worried about the defense stopping Tulane. You're going to see a 60-point win or something on Saturday. But there are things that need to be fixed, and I think for me – it's it's completing the offensive picture, and that to me means getting the tight end involved. Seriously. No, I agree. <laughs> they have too many options. Too. Yeah, like last, j- last year. there's too and many we weapons. I think. <laughs> a couple of years there, yeah. But uh, no, that's that's a times old. I mean, we've been saying that since I think Ballard's days, where we want to get the tight end more involved. Been saying that a lot longer than that. <laughs> it's it's pretty, yeah. Um, but no, what I, I'd like to see uh, the offensive line pick up the stunts a little bit better this game. I thought there was too many hits on the quarterback. Um, luckily, he can take a hit back there. But um, and there were some instances where it was on him, where there was a guy hot off the edge and he didn't pick it up, didn't see it. It's a little bit better awareness, I guess, on situations like that. But um, aside from that, I mean, offense looked great, I thought, um, other than the obvious drop balls. Um, but on defense, the explosive plays, I don't think they have a tipped in back there um, on Tulane. But if there are chances that explosive plays will happen because they'll probably be down to be taking some shots. So see the elimination of the explosive plays. I'd like to see a running clock in this game over as soon as possible. Uh, yeah. You know, these are not fun to cover. Uh, I don't know how you guys feel in the fourth quarter when those young guys are getting reps, but I'm ready to write a story and go home. And then I'm ready to make that miserable trip over to Happy Valley just for a big game. So uh, running clock, I'm not going to get my wish. Maybe these guys all will. We're winding down. We're sorry for the technical difficulties if you couldn't hear us early on. It's the first time we've had it with seven guys on a Tuesday. We're going to try and get as many Letterman in here as possible, and we'll try and work out our audio issues. So Jake Stoneburner down there, Boom Heron, Beanie Wells, who's gone, Evan Spencer, Jeremy Birmingham, Reed Fragel. I'm Austin Ward. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next week right here on LettermanRow.com.